We're heading out to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems Fan Guest Hotline. Check with our good friend of Bucknuts. He is Steve Hellwagon. Steve, thanks so much for the time, buddy. Always appreciate it. A lot going on in the college football world. Maybe not so much on the field right now. Before we get to that, Buckeyes pretty quiet on the portal front, Steve. Only a few more hours remain until midnight tonight with the transfer portal closing for the second time in the second window. Any anticipation or expectation, Steve, that anything's going to happen here in these late hours of the transfer portal? Yeah, it's very interesting that only three guys have entered here in the spring portion of this with uh, Dallin Hayden, uh, the safety Hawkins, and then uh, Jihad Carter here a day or two ago. And uh, Ohio State, by my count, uh, if you add a punter at some point, the scholarship is going to be around 84 right now, which would leave them with one spot available. And uh, I do think they have needs. I think, you know, this team would be helped if they got a true front-line offensive lineman, perhaps a third-string running back uh, veteran to uh, be an insurance policy behind uh, Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. I think those are two glaring uh, areas with Hayden leaving, obviously. But, uh, you know, we'll find out later today. Uh, You know, guys can file their paperwork today. And then uh, within two days, the school has to process it and put them into the portal. And uh, unless somebody goes on social media today to announce it, uh, could be a quiet ending to this uh, this period. Do you think there is anyone in there currently, as you mentioned, you know, acquiring an offensive lineman? Is there anyone worth going after at this point, Steve? I mean, it's it'd be nice to obviously get someone, but finding someone that would be a, a surefire improvement, I think, might be a little tougher. Yeah, you're probably right, and uh, I think it'll take some scouring. I mean, they came up with Josh Simmons last year, and uh, he turned out, after some early uh, hiccups, I thought his back half of the season was much better. Uh, I agree. I mean, you know, you're taking somebody's uh, also ran, perhaps. In some instances, are there any true frontline guys out there? I don't know. Uh, I haven't studied it that closely like – They've got a whole room of people over there at the uh, Wayne Woodrow Hayes Athletic Center who uh, are devoted to this, whereas, uh, you know, I, I heard an interview with Urban Meyer. He said when they got there, there was no real recruiting department, and now you've got a whole room of people devoted both to high school but, um, you know, just as important to scouring that portal. So, uh, you know, we'll guess have to wait and see on that. He is Steve Hellwagon of Bucknuts with us here in the Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems Fan Guest Hotline. How many of those staff, Steve, do you think uh, are their attention is, like, to stop other football organizations from tampering? Because Nick Saban's out here on the draft just been like, yep, we tried to get Quinion Mitchell from Toledo, and we wouldn't enter the portal. Like, I mean, how many, how many of their staff are just trying to keep their players on the roster? Yeah, you know, retention is such a big thing right now, and uh, the assistant coaches have to continue to shower the love on these guys and show them the light at the end of the tunnel and say, your day is coming, you know, at least for the ones that they feel have a future at Ohio State. Uh, I thought that was kind of a cute line by Nick Saban. I think he was just trying to be very complimentary of the young player coming from the Mid-American Conference. I think Toledo, I, I I, I don't know. I think it's they haven't had maybe two first-round picks in the entire history of the program. And so I think uh, that was a nice little nugget that he threw out there. I don't think there was actual tampering involved trying to get a guy to enter the portal. I mean, maybe, maybe as Urban would have said, maybe they called his third uncle a couple of times or something to get him in the portal. But uh, I, don't, I don't take that as serious, though. Do you think he'll be the last Mac player ever taken in the first round? Oh, my goodness, Bobby. It, it's sad. It really is the way uh, that this thing is going. The Mid-American Conference, both in basketball and football at this point, is a developmental league to get guys ready to move up to the Power Four conferences and Power Five with Big East in basketball. That's basically why I heard one Mac basketball coach basically lament that, that uh, – you know, you talk about what Holtman was running into at Ohio State with guys coming and going and, and one and done leaving and not uh, replacing them with Branham and Sensabaugh. Uh, the same thing applies at the Mid American Conference. You have guys, you know, like Mark Sears a few years ago jumps off to Alabama, you know, and goes and plays in a Final Four at Alabama. He was made and developed at Ohio University by Jeff Bowles in basketball, the same premise, obviously. Uh, in football, I mean, look at Will Kaczmarek, you know, on the Ohio State yeah. roster 
two seasons at OU, did pretty well. You know, Ohio State, you know, it, it, to use a baseball term, plucked him out of the minors and put him in the in the show. So, uh, you know, not to disparage Ohio U at all because I think there's a lot of us who love watching the Bobcats and, and, and other uh, mid-American teams, uh, the Red Hawks and everybody else. But uh, it's great competition in that league, but – it's an unfortunate situation right now. Steve was reading last night. We were going over this a lot during the show this morning about the House v. NCAA case and how hopefully the NCAA is going to settle on their charter institutions, you know, to the tune of like $4 billion, and how we're going basically to a system now that's going to be direct payment from the university for the NIL of, of the athletes. Um, I mean, it's the it's kind of the end of the amateurism in the sport as we know it, but I mean, as soon as that Virginia lawsuit came out that they were going to do it, you had to figure that something nationally was going to come of this, and I think that's ultimately the end and our destination here. Yeah, we could talk for a half hour on this, but in a nutshell, this goes back to California years ago saying that athletes could get NIL and the NCAA, the presidents, the uh, conference commissioners, the athletic directors never got a whole, ahead of it. And uh, Gene Smith a couple of weeks ago had that hour-long symposium and he really laid it out there, and he basically admitted that it's because nobody took the ball and ran with it five years ago to say, hey, guys, this is where, you know, it's kind of like in hockey, this is where the puck is headed. That's where you need to be, and uh, nobody did that. So now they're trying to play catch-up, and I do think these Big Ten and SEC talks, there's going to be some standardized uh, payments to athletes at the highest level in college athletics, and then perhaps the next level will be the ACC and the Big 12 because they're not going to have the TV dollars that these mega SEC and Big 10 are going to have, and then you'll have the rest, you know, American, mid-American, et cetera. So it's going to create a three, three-tier three system for college athletics. It, it's not, you know, perhaps optimum if you're a fan of Cincinnati or Houston or, uh, you know, Clemson, you know, unless they latch on somewhere, Florida State. It's not what any, anybody really wants because I think they're going to continue to be competitive. But in every aspect of football, the, the Big Ten and the SEC have moved ahead and uh, left everybody behind, including negotiating spots for themselves in the playoffs. So um, it is what it is. That's where we're headed. And uh, let's just say better be one of the haves like at Ohio State than one of the have-nots. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Steve, always appreciate the time. Thanks as always. Enjoy the day, buddy, and we'll check in again soon, all right? 